Boom. Now we're recording. Yes, I we literally just... Is this how season two is going to... It is. <laughs> it is the season two <laughs> premiere of the Varsity Brews podcast, and we just went about five minutes, and I didn't record a single thing. Or what? I, <laughs> it's my first the time. Doing, yeah. <laughs> it's my first time doing this, all right? By Heat Sider Zade, Evan Charbley, live at Westwind Brewery Company, where we do this show a lot. Big shout out to Aaron West of Westwind Brewery Company for letting us drink his beer, eat his food, and of course, introducing us to the whole community of uh, a brewery. Yeah. Uh, community, I should say. Yeah, Brewery 101. You get to learn a little bit every week. That's right. So, what, what level? Are you to 201 now in the classes? I mean, I hope so. I think so, probably. 201? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll increase that knowledge to 301 so. and graduate here go. at some point. But we're going to have a great season coming up. We were just uh, talking about our uh, journey outside of the brewery. We're going to take the show on the road January 29th. At Hop Station in Mishawaka, if you want to come watch. Yeah, it's an awesome place. I mean, I've been there. I know you haven't been there, Vahid. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of unassuming. Um, you know, similar to here at Westwind where it's a little bit off the beaten path. You don't, if, if you don't know where this place is or haven't been here before, chances are you might have driven by it many times and, and, and not know where it is. Hop Station is very similar. You pull in the parking lot. I think it's, it, I think it's either like a Dollar General next to it or was – or a laundromat, or something along those lines, and you pull and you're like, there's really a cool place here. And yeah. you walk in, and again, it kind of has the dive bar type of feel, uh, but it's a really neat setup because there's there's Papa Shot, there's pool, dart boards, there's board games kind of littered everywhere if you want to play that. But then they have this unreal list of craft beer, both on tap, and some of Aaron's beer is there, but they have a ton of different breweries from all over, they also have a lot of cans, too, that they have that come in. And the guys there have such a good relationship just with distro and breweries from Indiana, Michigan, outside of here, where they get some really, really cool stuff. So, you know, you open up the menu, and you're like, what? this is like five pages worth of beer. Yeah. And then there's another three pages worth of whiskey. Oh, and then their pizza. Vahid, their pizza. So what you're saying is it's going to be lit. It's so good. It's yeah, going to be lit. The pizza. Yeah. You know, I'm a sucker for pizza. It's usually a we, <laughs> Julian. Julie and I will each buy one, and usually get a third to go. <laughs> That's usually kind of how it goes. I try and convince my wife of that, but oh. she's like, "Why do we need that much food?" Because I'm hungry. All well, the for time. for us, at, at, at like eleven or midnight, we've decided it's never been a bad idea to have an extra pizza in the refrigerator. <laughs> so critical. <laughs> So critical. Well, thanks for joining us again here for a season premiere, season debut, season two of the Varsity Brews podcast. We're going to put a bow on season one by talking. Let's just talk for just a couple minutes. I don't want to go super in-depth, but just give me your overall thoughts as the Notre Dame football season is done, winds down. They beat South Carolina. Looking Surprisingly. A little, it was looking sketch for a while. Terrible to start. The, I mean, the so first, give me your thoughts well, on that. Well, the them. first drive, you know, I watched, um, I was kind of in and out. You know, I had some things going on, obviously, a holidays, busy time. Um, but I watched the first drive, and I was like, <laughs> it's going to be a long day. I mean, it looked way too easy. You know, right. just a, a mix and match of pass and run. And you kind of got that feel that, you know, here we are and buckle up. And, and really, for the first quarter and a half, it, it, it kind of was that way. 21 to 7. You ha- yeah, you have to give a lot of credit to, to the coaching staff at Notre Dame and obviously the players for continuing to battle and chip away. Um, and it was it ended up being a great college football game. I mean, it really did. You had, I mean, you had what, <laughs> a couple pick sixes? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, from Tyler Buckner. <laughs> he was like, I don't know how many years it dated back. It might have been 15 or 20 years. It was the first time a player rushed for two touchdowns, threw for two, and through two pick sixes That's in crazy. the same game. That's crazy. And and still go out there and win. Um, so, yeah. you know, that, that was pretty great. And obviously, they didn't have Michael Mayer. They didn't have Isaiah Foskey. But they were there on the sideline. They, they were there on the sideline. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I get it. It was, they were not, I mean, what, they were just kind of wearing, it was yeah, like issue just, gear, yeah, street clothes. Right. This is the nature of where we are right now with within... You know, until the playoffs expand and maybe there are some more meaningful bowl games, if you're a draft eligible guy, it really doesn't make sense for you to play. Being down there, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't have a problem if I was playing, <laughs> seeing guys like that you do wouldn't. that. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah. 
I, I just, I, you know, I get it. I also get why Nick Saban said what he said to his sure. team. I get both sides of that argument. Are you here or are you not? Yeah. You know, like, what? if you're going to suit up and come all the way down, and you're going to, like, well, come then get to the, the field, game. Right? <laughs> or just go sit in the stands. <laughs> right. Just, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to make the effort to do that, you know, I don't, I don't get, and I get if you're, like, a top five draft pick or whatever, but I also get, listen, you don't impress anybody by standing on the sideline, right? right? Like, you don't increase your draft status by doing that. So I get both sides of the argument. Uh, finally putting a bow on the season, we get this unbelievable quarterback from Wake Forest. N- number one, do you think he's a championship-level quarterback? And number two, where do you think Tyler Buckner fits into the mm. whole scheme oh, of man. 2023 You're putting Notre me on Dame spot football? Early here, some hot takes. Listen, we're we're going. Right. It's season okay. two. I think Notre Dame got the best available quarterback in the transfer portal. I I, I think so. Am I going to go and say that it's now a you have a championship caliber quarterback who's going to lead this Irish offense? I'm not going to say that right now. Um, I think he does fit within what Notre Dame does. I'm curious to see how this offense morphs. My concern is less about the quarterback position and who he's going to be throwing to. That's the Got big it. question mark for me. You have returning offensive linemen. I think with Harry he stand now. Yeah, I, I think mean, he's a gonna, solid unit. He's going to continue to build that chemistry and that rapport. Great running back group. And now you add a piece at the quarterback position who, if you look at his stats over the last couple of years, you're automatically adding some value there. Right. You are. But you lose Michael Mayer. Yep. Who... This past year, if they had not had him, <laughs> offense might have looked, and it was, it was at times very up and down, very inconsistent. So I think that, that for me is who's going to step up at the wide receiver position, tight end, then two. Um, but you look at the schedule. It's, just, it's, a, it's, again, it's a tough schedule again next year. <laughs> Ohio State. It really is. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, you name it. Um, USC is on there. Plus, going to Ireland. I mean, so yeah. you factor in the travel going to there and coming back and the hype around it and whatnot. USC, USC, always a tough. Yep. I mean, they're going to be tough again. They will. Um, so you're looking at the early schedule and you're saying, okay, maybe they lose two or three games. But, you know, this, this new quarterback coming in, offensive line, if they can shore up the outside, the three running backs are coming back. I know. That, I mean, and that, really, if they can control the line of scrimmage the way that they did in the games where they really dominated, rush the football, and then you're able to play action pass and push the ball down the field a little bit. I think that they can have success offensively. Who's going to replace Foskey on that D line? So, uh, we don't know yet. I mean, yeah. that's that's the thing. But I do like where their defense is now. Now, granted, they gave up some big plays um, in the bowl game, and certainly more points than they wanted to. Uh, but right now, I mean, in college football, you look at it; it's it's trying to slow down offensive. I mean, you look at the Tim right sixty five points the championship <laughs> game is a great example and. Man, it was 65 points. It's unbelievable, I mean, yeah. Um, but, well, I mean, for Notre Dame right now, there's got to be a lot of excitement. I mean, I, they've gone out and got a few guys in the transfer portal. Um, I think that that was ideal. Um, yep. I think that they're going to have to continue to do that. Again, with, the, with COVID year and the way the transfer portal rules are right now, um, they, they Notre Dame has to continue to be aggressive in that realm. I really think they do. For sure. Now, this isn't going to take away from what they do recruiting high school players because they still need to go out there and they continue to have to get that generational quarterback. Right. They really haven't had that guy who on the roster is like, hey, that guy, that guy is going to be a first-round draft pick playing in the NFL on Sundays after three years. Right. That's, that's the I think, the missing piece in my mind. Um, but they're starting to close the gap. I mean, another great recruiting class. I mean, you look at next year's class, too. I mean, they're getting the players. They've got the mentality. I think Marcus Freeman is bringing the culture. We saw some growing pains and learning experience from him early on as a first-year head coach. Right. But to finish the year the way that they did in that bowl game, and I'm not saying that they're going to carry momentum into the offseason, but there cer- certainly should be some excitement. Now, what I would say to Notre Dame fans is temper your expectations, I think, next year a little bit. And this happens to start every Notre Dame football season. We're going 12-0. and 0. We're going to be in the college football playoffs. I mean, I think there should be some realistic expectations considering the schedule. And, again, um, I, I, I think it's a te- it can be a 10-win team, which yeah. may get you in the playoffs. Yeah. Well, you mentioned NIL, and uh, I actually spoke to an NIL expert. So Luke Fedlum 
is a consultant for teams like Notre Dame, Ohio State, uh, Florida, Louisville, just to name a few. He also uh, takes a look at name image likeness for each school. And, you know, where are we headed with that? I had a chance to speak to him. We're going to have that interview on the other side of the break. And then coming up a little later on, we're going to take a dive into the NFL. Yes, and sir. the playoffs are coming up this weekend. So we're going to talk to Aaron about the beers he's got on tap right now that you don't want to miss. We and probably I'm- have to talk to him about the Lions, too. I know you don't want to talk about that, but... I guess we'll talk about it. I'm the only, I, right now, I'm, the only, have, I'm have, the only guy right now that has a, a team in the playoffs. Let me have some beers first, okay, and then we can talk idea. about it. <laughs> All right, that interview coming up next, and then we're going to catch up with Aaron West here from Westwind in just a moment. You're listening to, and you're watching, the Varsity Brews Podcast. Let's just start a little bit with uh, your background and, you know, the relationships you've developed over the years with professional athletes, collegiate athletes, and kind of how you've gotten into that space. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to work with professional athletes uh, in different capacities for about the last 18, 17, 18 years. And my focus has really been on making sure that we educate athletes as much as protect them. So, As a practicing lawyer, I'm a non-agent sports lawyer. So I've worked with athletes on all of their off-the-court, off-the-field endeavors. And a big part of what I noticed was that to help them navigate effectively and to be protected, it was important to provide them with education. This oftentimes for professional athletes, they get thrust into this brand new world that really is a business world that they aren't always necessarily prepared for. And now we know that with name, image, and likeness, the same thing is happening at the college level where college student athletes now have these opportunities, but with opportunities come responsibilities. And we want to try to teach them those responsibilities through protective education. Well, and name, image, and likeness, Luke, can be a confusing thing for, for not only athletes, but for spectators as well. So can you break it down and simplify it for us? What exactly is name, image, and likeness, and what's going on in the collegiate world today? So name, image, and likeness is simply the opportunity for college student athletes to earn compensation in ways that they've never been able to before. NIL, or name, image, and likeness, is based on an individual's persona rights, the right that someone has to their own name, their own image, and their own likeness. And now college student athletes can license or lend that name, image, and likeness uh, to a third party, a company, a a brand, an organization uh, for a fee and be compensated for that. So when we break down name, it's just simply that it's your name. Image would be a photo or a video of someone. And then likeness, most student athletes think that likeness has to do with their likability, their followers on social media, It really just has to do with a graphic representation of that athlete. So if you've ever been to a county fair or a state fair where you've had a caricature done of you or a cartoon made of you, you know who that is, but it's not a photo or a video. That's what likeness is. And student athletes have rights to their own likeness as well. And part of that, uh, if I can ask you, social media, especially Instagram, has been just blowing up in terms of name, image, likeness. I mean, social media has played such a vital role in some of these collegiate athletes getting recognition, right? Social media is a big part of name, image, and likeness. It isn't everything. And there are a lot of different ways student athletes are engaging in NIL, but social media most certainly is one of the more common ways that athletes are engaging. When you think about it, This is the generation of student athletes who grew up with social media. They're very comfortable with it. They they've, you know, I have to think about what am I going to post on social? Cause I still, at my age, I'm trying to figure it out. And student athletes in college at this point, they, that's just been a normal part of their life. So companies and brands who are trying to penetrate an area of the market that student athletes can help them penetrate 
it's a great opportunity for companies and brands to come together with student athletes on social media with name, image, and likeness opportunities at play. What does Notre Dame do to stay relevant, but also to keep up with name, image, and likeness? Is there a balance there? Or are we going to see one side win out plain and simple? There, there is a balance there. And, and, and what that is partially is what Notre Dame is already doing. So we've had the opportunity to work with Notre Dame and their student athletes uh, across sports and help them understand how do they protect themselves as they navigate name, image, and likeness. But you also see some of the opportunities that student athletes have had. Chris Tyree just recently signed an NIL deal with NBC. I mean, that's something, in, and I, I'd have to go back, but that might be the first major network deal with a student athlete. So in some respects, Notre Dame is most certainly leading the way. And I think that the unique position that Notre Dame finds itself in, in terms of being independent, but being affiliated with the ACC in some regards, like that creates opportunities for student athletes. And you think about just the overall market that Notre Dame as a brand and the strength that Notre Dame as a brand has for student athletes, I think it creates an opportunity for some really unique and fun opportunities that we're going to see more and more of out of student athletes at Notre Dame. Now, what, this is a very broad question because a lot can happen, but in your opinion, what happens next? What should happen next in this wild, wild west space of the NIL? I think at some point we're going to see some federal standard for name, image, and likeness, and that's going to have to come out of Congress. Now, I've been I've been on my own podcast, Game Changer podcast with NIL expert Luke Fedlam, shameless plug, but I've been on my own podcast where I've talked about how it's hard to see a path forward for a national standard when it comes to name, image, and likeness, because there are a lot of issues that come into play that are much more controversial or rather partisan than just simply saying we want to let student athletes earn compensation. But one thing that I've had some conversations with some athletic directors and some some other influential folks in this space, we could see Congress come out with creating a federal law around name, image, and likeness that would then allow, more importantly, allow for a federal agency to be responsible for the enforcement of the rules so that we have some equality or some equity in terms of what name, image, and look, name, image, and likeness looks like across the country. So from that perspective, if you could imagine the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, or some other governmental agency being responsible for enforcement versus the NCAA, I think then you start to see enforcement happen in a whole new way that could have a whole new meaning for what NIL looks like across the board. Well, and can I just quickly ask you about that? Because, I mean, the NCAA right now seems like the wild, wild west. You know, I mean, we <laughs> don't really know what to expect from the NCAA and, and their handling of this. So in some regards, are they bypassing the NCAA or are they saying, well, NCAA, this is what we're doing now. You got to get your stuff together pretty much. Congress is most certainly going to bypass the NCAA. They don't need the NCAA's approval for anything. Um, they're going to be able to engage how they see, you know, see fit for st protecting student athletes, protecting the integrity of college sports, et cetera. The challenge is, is that N the NCAA is most certainly also lobbying Congress because they want their own protections as they've gone through multiple lawsuits. They lost a big one at the Supreme Court level. So they want to make sure that they're protected in, in the sense of trying to save whatever authority the NCAA still has left. They're trying to save that and protect that. So Congress doesn't have to go through the NCAA, but it will be interesting if Congress acts how far reaching any type of federal legislation would be and what impact that would have on the NCAA and any protections that the NCAA is actually seeking. Back on the Varsity Brews podcast. Again, I didn't hit record. It's all right. <laughs> Do the remix. New year, new you. <laughs> yeah. New year, same me. <laughs> we were just talking about the Lions here off air. And I, I got to give you props. I got to give you respect. 
the Lions had a, a good defense, and I knew after that that in the first quarter when we didn't score the touchdown. Oh yeah, I'm like, here we go again. This, yeah. this is going to be the same result as the first time we played you guys up in Detroit. Does this mean you have to roar like live on air for me? So what that, that maybe so, do they do that in games? Or what do yeah, they, they, they have a lion roar. Yeah, I mean, what is the, yeah, like, I, I don't know if I can even do it. Do you have a good lion roar? No, no. <laughs> Were you a Lions fan growing up? Yes, not really. Yes, he was. Well, our household, yeah, we did, we did, we we had a pro team, but didn't. If that makes sense. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. Barry Sanders. <laughs> well, so that's that's always a joke, is we had Barry Sanders for like three years, and then he yep. was like, "I'm out." So it was like the Wayne Fonts era. Nice. I think, Gary, I think Gary Moeller was in there at yeah. one point. I think too. it was like a Detroit Panthers too. It was like in a minor league football. That <laughs> yes. was kind of like a f- farm league for yeah, the Lions. Right. That's probably why we're so bad. <laughs> well, we're sitting here with Aaron West again, man. Thanks so much for a great season one. Season two, we're going to take the show yeah. on the road a little bit yeah. and try out some different places. But we want to try some different brews here yeah, heck to yeah. start season two. I look up at the board and I don't recognize it. Yeah, that's good. That means that I'm working hard and, and the team's doing their job to keep things rolling. So, yeah, we've got a lot of new beers uh, that have come back. Uh, a couple of these beers we're going to try today um, were original beers that have only ever come out once. So I went back through the arsenal just kind of looking back. I mean, for us, it's year, what, we're three, almost three and a quarter years through this thing now. And yeah. so went back in the arsenal. And even prior to, like, Jamie working here, she's like, what are those beers? Are those new? And like, no, no, these are these are first time New England's tweaked a little bit really happy with how they came out so yeah we got four big samples are we do we want to go low to high or high to low you are the expert i'm only in i'm only in 201 like? he graduated i, I like me. to start low and work my That's, way i'm with you on that he like graduated that. me to 201 yeah for beer university yeah. so i don't know like so he I has some of the base level or? fundamentals yeah. and the point. only reason i want to do that is is if like we're, we're gonna try the darkness visible barrel age which it is straight naughty <laughs> It really is. It's dangerously naughty. Yes. Um, but but I don't want us to have that bourbon flavor for some of the other earlier beers. So let's start with Piranha. You, you don't want me to be drunk on cameras. That way. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So we're going to start with Piranha, All right, and I'll tell the story. So this Param is that what it's called? Param. Yeah. So if you were in, uh, I think Paluma was around when the yeah. holidays. Yeah. So yeah. this is the, uh, the, the the sister beer, if you will, of a Palum. All right. So... Param is 5.6 on the Richter scale. Yeah, so See, lower than normal. Yeah. And it's an, it's an, what we're it's used an IPA. To, right? Right? We made this if you've got a late afternoon Zoom meeting you don't want to be in yeah. for some reason. Don't know who was in <laughs> one of those. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh, this is a 5.6, so it's a nice, easy Ooh. drinker. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, yeah. It's got a nice little grain built to it in, in the front thing. It's not overly hoppy. Is this up Ooh. your alley right here? Dude. Yeah. All right. This is... Wow. It's clean. One sip, and this could be in the top five of my oh, all time. All right. Oh, wow. Man. We might have to do that at some point. List our top five. Yeah, here. top five at Ed Westman. But yeah, this is super palatable. So Palum was really real, good. Palum was real popular. So we I made uh, uh, Palam, and this is a it, it's a series beer. So there's two two versions of it. But yeah, these I think these are going to start to become regulars. So a few people asked us to have a lower ABV, uh, you know, beer that they want to have more than one with, and I you know I get it. So we're trying to. Uh, oh, you should tell them to so, get into mid-season form a little quicker. I mean, come on. <laughs> so this, Just have two dark as You'll be fine. This is 5.6 on the Richter scale. Yeah. Can I ask you a, a stupid rookie question? Absolutely. So in beer, you know how wine has legs, right? Does beer have legs when you're making it, or does it have a certain, like... Hey, it has alcohol content of this because I because of this. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the legs or the alcohol content come from a couple of different things. So the amount of sugar that's going into it, um, certain uh, grains that are used. So the more grains that typically are in a beer can drive the ABV up. So everybody's eyes, well, hey, how'd you make darkness visible so high? There's there's additional sugars you can put into it. Um, you know, malts, oats, all those stuff pick up different things that create natural sugars, right? And so once the yeast goes in and ferments, it basically helps determine it. So if we want to make a lower ABV beer like Palam, um, but we just bring the, the grain build down a little bit and then you know part of it's tweaking and making sure that you know we've got a, a, a flavor profile we're chasing and we want it to be you know palatable i mean this this you could have this with the pizza so you make adjustments at halftime we make adjustments at halftime when we're brewing <laughs> we're all about adjustments here <laughs> at the varsity brews podcast it drinks really smooth yeah um, it's bright. Yeah, it is. It's bright. It's a warm-up beer. You know, I mean, it's like, hey, if you're going to go, you know, sample four, you know, beers here this at Westwood, this is the one you start with. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's our next, uh, All right, next one beer? On uh, we're going to go to, I think we're going to do so much at stake next. So that'll be, okay. and, and this is still uh, 7.6 on the Richter scale. I don't think I've had uh, this one. You yet. may have 7. not. 7.6. So. Yeah, yeah this, this one of our, the two New Englands we're trying today, so much at stake and Sky River were both first-time beers uh, that we brought out when we first opened. And so it's only a second time brewing them. So. 
Packers what? are familiar wow. with uh, so much at stake. <laughs> Can I just make jokes all day about? Yeah. It? I mean, like it makes me feel better. Yes. Hey, I'm I, I I'm, was, I'm happy to hear jokes like that out of Packers fans. <laughs> you Man. threw a pride joke earlier too about there's so much pride. That's the that's what that's one of the don't spill this on the thing, bar, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. One pride, one, one pride. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is it, no. This is a what now? This so is this a, is a New England. Okay. Yeah, double dry hopped. I just sounded really old there. This sounds like a what now? <laughs> Twenty twenty three, baby. New year, right, new me. Exactly. <laughs> So seven point six. A little um, more to it. Yeah, peep, yeah, a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more body. Um, New England style. Definitely, has got the nice haze color, so we can show our video. Oh yes. yes. Oh yeah. Check yes. that out. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Um, so yeah, they've been. Uh, yeah, look people, at that color. Yeah, people have been smashing this. So. It's it's got a nice it's got a kind of a wheat color to it, but it yeah. It doesn't taste how it looks. Yeah, I mean New England. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying like it's. You know. Yeah, yeah. When we, when we, uh, I don't know if we've mentioned that in season one, but we, like we went traveling up in the northeast and went to all these different New England styles. So we kind of learned a little bit about the, you know, wh- what is the, the New England style? It's light, it's floral, it's delicate. You know, it's got some biscuit and, mal- um, and mal- mal- not overly malty character, but tons of hops to it. You know, biscuit. Did you just say yeah, biscuit? Like, yeah, biscuit. Like you know, like a dog biscuit. You know, like biscuit. <laughs> I'm learning all sorts know, of new things. Right? Yeah, that's a that's a flavor profile, man. Nice. In beer, yeah, it's got a little bit of a biscuit uh, okay, touch good. to it. A little bit of mosaic in there, <laughs> man. You're gonna be a junior. Three hundred one by, <laughs> <laughs> by the end of this thing. <laughs> We just no, got to get you good. an untapped profile. Yeah, we do. You need to get on untapped. I think that would Wait, what? that would be blend it's a, perfect. It's a social site for uh, beer drinkers that you can check in when you go places. And um, am I going to have to swipe and, or something? Because my wife is sitting right there. And rate the no. It's you just. It's your you profile. Rate the, you, you rate, rate the, the beers. beers. Yeah, you rate the beers, and then it helps you also go back and say, "Hey, what were your favorite beers yeah, at a spot that you know, I maybe like you this?" Went, yeah. Untapped. When, when, do you have what profile? Uh, I think that mine is. Uh, I I did. It's probably still there. Oh, oh it is. Yeah, you want me to look it up real quick? I don't I have. Uh, I don't have the app currently. It's been a minute since I. Oh, created okay, it just don't judge me when I show you guys this real quick because I'll, I'll, I'll. I think my username is Honey Bear Eleven. Hun- Honey Bear Eleven. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> that was my gamer tag when I played Black Ops Two on. Call of Duty. Oh, Look for cool. him now yeah. online. Yes. All right, here's my profile. So this helps me log. Don't call me an alcoholic because you judge me. 8,700 check ins? Yeah, I've checked in 8,797 <laughs> 8, times. Is that times. like how many different beers you've had? So that's a good question. No, those are just my check ins. So to the right <laughs> so, of this, Vahid. So it could be, yes, to the right of it. There we to go. the right of it, this is 4,981 different beers. Yes, those are called distinct beers. So, and, so not, not. And how many years is that? Well, if you look, you know what's nice about this app? Because I forget. A lot yeah. of stuff. Then, I joined February fourteenth in two thousand fifteen. Happy Valentine's so Day! So, if you do the numbers, this take, is just tracking your love with beer. Somebody take those numbers real quick. Four four forty nine eighty one divided Heather, by Heather. Can you do, do a quick math? Quick math. Uh, take four thousand nine hundred eighty one and divide it by eight. Eight. Well, technically, because it just started. Yeah. Just say seven. No, eight. no eight. Yeah, because twenty twenty three minus twenty fifteen. Yeah. Is eight. Okay. Fine. Yeah, four thousand nine hundred eighty-one yep. divided by divided eight. by eight, and this is going to tell you six hundred twenty-two. We'll that, say two or three, and divide that by three hundred sixty-five days, because I think it was about two new beers a day, is what I. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean it does. Yeah. I mean that's. That, but here's Listen, the, you wanted but the math work given it to you. Two point seven. So here's the one point seven. So just about two beers. Yeah. This is again the beer education for you on there. That's distinct beers. Yeah, those are distinct. Beers. So that what that means is it's not like he. It's not a repeat. You're not it's, doing like Miller not, Lite twice in a day. And well, no, no, no. It. That's on the left side. Yes. Yeah, that's check-ins. How many beers that I've checked in? Man, this is like a CRM of like uh, beer keeping. This is great. Hey, oh, it's it, it, it's it's first class. You can man. take pictures too, which yeah. we know Aaron likes. It. That's probably how he got so, so good. So what is this called? What is this called again? <laughs> Tap or untapped? Untapped. Unta- we got to get the maker of Untapped on the show, dude. I might be able to do that. I've, I think I've called him a couple of times. Yeah, let's do it. I love that because I got to start a profile. This is uh, yeah. You should start a profile. I have yeah. like three different check ins. Your first friend is going to be uh, it's going to be Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Tom, I want to hear from you. Um, all right, so this is a good one. What right. else we got? We're staying in this realm. Uh, we're going to try Sky Sky River. Um, so another New England. I love the name, dude. Sky River. Sky River. Heck yeah. yeah. Yes. We got to be soaring. This is, this is 8%. Here, I'm going to hand this around the board. I don't want to get yelled at. 
And it, it this is one of those dangerously smooth, not drink like eight percent. So it looks similar. Cheers. No, cheers. It does. Still in the New England yep. style. Yep, hazy, hazy. Show our camera. Yep. There we go. Show yep. our cam. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, so Sky River, the name comes from... Um, so they should look like this. So they, I was totally wrong. Yes. Mo okay. Most New Englands, I say most. Everybody tries to claim <laughs> that totally in New England. Wrong, well, some can be a little juicier too, right? Yeah, With some are juicier. Our, our, our New Englands tend to be a little bit more on the dry side, okay. unless you get into the Primus of the world. But, you know, it's, it's right. really, so Primus is, looks a little more uh, orange Yeah, it's got an orange flavor. So, yeah, sometimes it comes just from the, the... Go ahead. You look like you got a fully loaded question. Does it look... I look so confused. Ooh, this is good. When when it's on camera, people are gonna be like, "Dude, this yeah, this guy." So um, if you notice, this has got a little bit more of a sweetness to yes, it. That, it does. That, uh huh. The other yeah. one was more biscuity. 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 Yeah. A biscuit. A biscuit. Yeah, it's got a biscuit yeah. flavor. I, I. That's me. My. You know, everybody's tongue's different. So if people are just watching this for the very the first biscuit. time, by the way, if people are watching this for the very first yeah. time. We're a beer and football podcast. So yep. basically, or ball, right? Football, football. Foot, football, football. Football or football or football. football. So that's where we stay in the realm. I'm the newbie, so I don't know a lot about craft beer uh, or as much as these two guys or you for sure. Um, PhD level over and there. And so, like, I'm still learning as <laughs> we go. So these, you know, me making the stupid comment about, oh, yeah. I, it doesn't look like this. Well, that's just me not knowing beer. So Well, it's interesting. You know, you talk about taste buds. When I first got into beer tasting, I, you know, I'd wonder why somebody pick it up like, oh, I taste peanut butter. I'm like, what? Peanut butter? There's not peanut butter in there. But what I learned is on the tip of our tongue, <laughs> no, this is a real thing. Seriously, like, uh, everybody has different taste buds. And so that's why different, you know, uh, beers are palatable to certain, you know, women, men, and, and, and different things. Different things pop for different, you know, for different people. So it makes it pretty cool. So if I told you this tastes like Nutella, you're. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, uh, Vahid, you may have had one too many Oops. Sky Rivers. <laughs> so speaking of uh, Nutella chocolate, right? It's one of my, my daughter's favorites. She loves Nutella. So you what, see is Pringles this? is making a Nutella dipped. Are Pringle? they really? What? Are yeah. they really? Yes. I did not pre, know like that. Pre-dipped. All right. Fantastic. It's a real what's, thing. What's our last one here? Next. All right. Gotta, oh, last oh, one. Oh, oh. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah. As he's getting that, let's try this uh, new creation. Yeah, we probably okay, should. A little that. quick intermission. We'll yep. grab these sandwiches. And then we've got to make our picks because my wife's giving me the evil eye here. You don't want to get the evil eye. All right. So this is a new, uh, a lot of times we proto stuff and you guys are like guinea pigs for us to, you know, try these things out. So. All right. So what is this I, called? Not, uh, this is a, a new creation. Uh, one of our bartenders, Brina. Put this together. Said, "Hey, I got a sandwich. I want you to try." It's all right. Let's give it a real. Oh, oh, this is like an Italian. Yeah, she's trying it with us, Heather. Oh, Heather this approved. is uh, bringing back uh, Dude, tailgating I just, memories. I just in, spilled shit all in uh, <laughs> look at this in Ann Arbor. <laughs> just, oh yeah, mm -hmm. this is kind of similar to like a. I love these. An Italian BM BMT yep. type style. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. She's got vine vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah. Yep. A yep. little bit of oil. Diced onion, uh, pepperoni, salami. Dude, I'm all about the red onion. Dude, you got to put this on the menu. I know. That's what I told him. Hey, Jamie. Is, is that, this coming is that Jamie's? You're right. This is good. Is Jamie's? this coming oh, yeah. yours? This is my edition here or no? Yeah, we may have to put this on the menu. You got to put this on the menu. Yeah, we've been testing. Yeah, we got to start testing stuff, you know? Jeez, no, I'm dropping it, Vahid. Well. Oh, man. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's in my belly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this last one, he said, just buckle up. It, it is. That's why we did the sandwich before, because, I mean, this thing is like, it's a whale. <laughs> Dude, this is legit. Oh, yeah. Big fan of that sandwich. Here we go. All right, drum roll. Here it is. What's this called? Darkness Visible Barrel Aged Edition. Yeah, so this is one that we... And the barrel is right behind me, yeah? It is, believe it or not. Yeah, man. Can we get that on camera? It's kind of cool. Yep. Oh, yeah. You can see can it. I, yeah. Can you see it? Um, so, Darkness Visible was a, a barrel aged stout. It was the first stout when we got done. It started off at 11. Oh, yeah. You could smell it. Mm -hmm. I like stouts, though. I, I well, do like Well, wait till you try this. Well, so, like this. We were at 11% when we went in. We, it's about, it finished up about 12. Um, but we, this is 12 point. Zero on the liquor scale? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that's, that's 12. Heather, you better pick me up later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is our first barrel age project we've ever done. Um, it's gotten great reviews. I think the untap rating on it is like a 4.57, 4.58. It's got a nice bourbon flavor to it. He already jumped in. He's ready to go. I Look know. at that face. Look at this, right? Let me see how it's doing on untap real Holy quick. Holy crap. Um, we only do... <laughs> Two 10 ounce pours per visit. Yeah, you can only do. <laughs> yeah. Vahid might only need one. Yeah. 
Dude, I've never even heard of left hand milk stout. This thing is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's doing fantastic on Untap. Um, not I, not anything against left hand milk stout, but it, this is crazy. It's got a four point five one rating on Untap, which is very very high. Is there, yeah. I mean, is, is there a little espresso flavor in this? Okay, here you go. So this is the best part about when you barrel age stuff. Um, we ended up using Streven Distillery out of Warsaw, so we wanted to. Okay. Some people haven't even heard of them. That's exactly. I have not. Yep, uh, our buddy Kurt knew one of those guys down there and said, "Hey, we want to do a barrel age project with her. Like we uh, we got a I think it was a seven year reserve, twenty one percent rye uh, barrel that we wanted to barrel age. We timed it with him four hours from when the bourbon was done uh, that came out of it. Um, we got it and we had our darkness visible in it. The risky thing is you don't sanitize a barrel, so you're you're counting on the distiller to make sure that they've mm. burnt the inside of that barrel pro- properly because everything you just talked about where you pick up an espresso i pick up a little bit of oak i've picked up actually cherry notes there's there's actually yeah. cherry notes in here um all that is coming from the actual barrel that's what makes barrel aging so so fun so when you come into the brewery you can only get two of these pours yeah we you know i'm you know obviously we're in the craft beer industry and we want people to enjoy it you know we don't want to you know <laughs> Make sure people are getting home and see stars. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, and we also wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to try it. But I mean, people are saying that uh, hey, this reminds me of early. Um, the comments that are being made in front of me to, from customers are this r- tastes like early Bourbon County uh, brand stout, which hey, that's a pretty nice yep. compliment. Um, you know, people are also said, oh, this is like transit. You know. Um, Closer to Bourbon County than it is transit, but you know those are two big players in the bourbon game, uh, the barrel age game, and for a first time jab at it, um, we've been selling a lot of them. I can tell you that there's not a lot left. Uh, so if, you, if you're gonna get a sample, you might want to do. Many, it. How much have you taken? <laughs> um, oh well, yeah, I think I well I tapped to my two. I think Evan's eyes look like they're glazing a little. <laughs> no, I'm dude. This <laughs> I'm I'm fantastic. A, hey, guy. cheers, buddy. This yeah. is this okay, is man. really really good stuff. Yeah, cheers. Um, Happy days. I just went from a, a 201 to a 501 <laughs> trying this beer. So the other thing I want to show real quick and see if we can get this on the thing. If you look, this is That's called, I'm right going to teach you a new terminology. It's called lacing. See that little thing right, right there? Yeah. Um, when, when you spin this, uh, you don't really don't want to over, a lot of people over carb their, their stouts, the good stouts, they're slightly carbon. So this is perfectly carb. So I, I had taken a sample and then slightly warm and slightly warm. Yeah. If you let this actually sit here yes. and warm up, if you ever see sometimes uh, of a heat and we're teaching yep. you as we're going, you, a lot of people, you could, they'll take their hands and they'll sit there. They may let us sit there for 30 minutes Same. just to, because 30 minutes from now, it'll actually have a completely different flavor and you'll have a different profile. Of really? That's what I do when I get bo- bottles, yeah. like oh, yeah. stout bottles. Yep. I, obviously, because so uh, you because you can age stout bottles. Yeah, is just that what put Guinness it in dark? is supposed to do? No, no, no. Different. totally yeah, different. Completely animal. different beer. Got yeah. it. Yeah, uh, the, the barrel aged stouts can last a long time. Like I, I just got done. Guinness is not a barrel aged stout. This, this is a barrel. This one is. This Guin- one is. Guinness is not. Though. Guinness is correct. That is correct. got it. Yep. Um, but yeah, so the the beer nerds that are out there, I mean, that's what they do. They they'll they'll buy stuff. And we didn't even can this though. We, this is an in brewery pub only. Are release. you going to bottle any of it for yourself and, uh, and age it? I may or may not. I may or may not have for for QC reasons. I think you should put a couple yeah, in a perfect. can and we'll hide we'll hide it away from okay. you know from where it's at. Dude, this is. I mean, it's it's literally one of the best outs I've ever had. For yeah, sure. and people are super excited. Well, make sure you rate it a five point oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go on on tap, give it a five oh, man. That yeah, that helps on us. On tap, <laughs> I'm coming for you, man. <laughs> I'm coming for you. All right. Um, so we we did everything. The beers, the the, uh, the sandwich, the sandwich. Oh man, phenomenal. Yeah. Now two, we've got to make up. our picks with you. Okay. We're, oh, it's going to be okay. one of those kind of shows. We're going to do a shortened version today, okay, just sweet. to give people a taste of what's coming up season yeah, two. Heck yeah, we're on the road. Yep. January 29th, we're going to be station. at Hop Station. Yep. I, I, was, I was at Hop Station earlier today, and the boys are good. That'll be what, a Sunday. What time are we at Hop Station? Uh, we, they, they're all, they, they open at, uh, I think they open at 3. So if we, I mean, we don't want to do, be there right at 3, Sweet. I mean, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'm game. I mean, we're, yeah, they're know, excited to be having us. So watch the games together. Shelby's going to be pouring beers for us. And I said, I just you know, give us a little corner with some electricity. We'll be good. We well, won't, won't cost too much. We'll time. have the time next week on social media. So make sure you follow West Wind and... You know, at Varsity Brews, Brews Podcast. Yeah, yes. on, we got a logo now. Yeah, now we do. 2023, man. man Pick the, we're, 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 we're just going like this, man. Moves. <laughs> if I can hit record on that uh, podcast button, then we're all good. No problem at Don't all. Don't miss the good stuff. So, uh, he's going to go through the all list right, of ready? games right. in order. We're going to make our picks quick. Okay. And we're going to say So we got the Super Wild Card Weekend coming up. We yeah. got games Saturday, Sunday, God, so excited. and Monday. I wish we were going to uh, San Francisco, though, because I think we would beat San Francisco. Oh. If we were going to San Fran. You think so? Nah. Man, 
<laughs> that just kind of. Well, let's start right there. We got oh, Seattle man, yeah. versus the Niners. I, I and feel like Seattle, like it was destiny that they get. What there. order are we picking? You go first, or is it me? You go first. Go ahead. I'll, I'll mean, go second. I got I got uh, San Francisco by a touchdown. It's going to be closer than people think. A touchdown. I got San Francisco by two touchdowns. I hey, I think San Francisco is good, and I think that there's going to be a big quarterback going to San Francisco. That's what I think. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh. you oh. thinking Roger, Rogers no, or no, Brady? No, no, no. Uh-huh. Brady. That's exactly which who I, one. Hey, I, it could be either. I'm telling you, one of those two boys is going to end up at San Francisco. You got well, Christian McCaffrey I don't now. Know. Dude. I agree. Dude, hey. Let you, me just you watch it's appealing. Just can, watch. Can I just tell you something? If Brock Purdy makes the NFC Championship game, how can you not be a Brock Purdy guy? I think but, Purdy has yeah. done a fantastic job. I don't want to but discredit he's not Aaron that. Rodgers but he's not Aaron Tom Rodgers Brady. or Tom Brady. Yeah, that's right. And I get, mean, he might be. Hey, both those. Well, then let, let one of those two guys go Trey and play for a year. Trey Lance or Brock Purdy? Well, right now, Brock Purdy. That's what I mean. Hey, Brock Purdy's good, but I'm telling you, you got two. Hey, Super Bowl champ yeah. quarterbacks that are ready for a new home. That's my. Right. That's my. Okay. Favorite. All right. Okay. So we all we, we both got San Francisco. I'll split the difference. I'll go San Francisco by ten. All right. Okay. All right. So next up, we all got, got San Francisco. We've got the Chargers at the Jaguars. Uh, I got the Chargers here on the road. Jaguars defense scares a lot of people. They're up and coming, but I got the Chargers on the road by a field goal. I'm gonna go. This is a tough one for me because Ju- Justin Herbert was my quarterback Dude, in my he's, fantasy he's league, so good and he too. is that he's my goat in he fantasy. So Although he struggled this year because he got injured early yeah. on, and it just did, it didn't work. I'll tell you what. Guess who my second quarterback, well, my backup quarterback was Trevor Lawrence. Uh huh. So who you going? <laughs> Goldie the Locks, the baby. I I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up. I I think the Chargers are a little bit. They've had a rough year. I mean, they haven't really gotten gotten things clicking. I'm actually gonna go with the upset here, and I'm gonna go Jacksonville. And I think they're gonna win by like six points. And I think it's gonna shock people. And I think that they're trending in the positive direction. The single best thing that could have ever happen was getting rid of. Yeah, <laughs> the guy. The guy. Yeah, we know so, who the guy yeah. is. <laughs> I'm going Jags by seven. Oh, all right, Jags. all right. We got Ooh, double Jags. Got the pizza uh, over here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so now we're moving to Sunday. I need another all one right. of these, dude. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I'm good. I'm feeling it. I'm hey, telling you. Hey, they're good for radio. <laughs> How did I just do that here? Hey, buddy, I, it's, it's, it's it's fantastic. It's lovely. Right? Uh, it is lovely. Okay, we've got a Sunday game now. Uh, this we got game the Dolphins. scares me, dude. We've got the Dolphins at the Bills. This game's. What did I tell you? about Michigan TCU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, we, we, both said, uh, we, we, we both said, said that. Don't bring that up. Like, well, no, I, I got to. I'm just saying, this game Michigan kind of has the similar the feel for me. I want I want the Bills to win the Super Bowl. That's the my Bills team. are going to win by 14. I don't think so. Oh, wow. You think that? Yeah. I don't think so. I think this game is going to be closer. I think it's, it's, a, it's a divisional rival. It's going to be closer than that. I think the Bills escape. Escape by... Four or five points. Okay, so two is out for this game, right? I, we I don't know. I think yeah, they no, say I, he made I, play. I don't know. I know. I and think they wa- came out and said yesterday. And yeah, Waddle I think two is out. Carved up. I carved up the defense last time, hey. and and Hamlin obviously is not playing. So, I mean, what does that mean for the back of this defense? Doesn't matter. Hey, if you guys watch that Monday Night Football game, I mean, that was a pretty emotional thing. I've never seen anything like that in sports, man. Crazy. You, hey, you talk about, like, uniting a country through a sport in a moment that happens. We're talking about life and death in sports. I mean, I'm telling you what, the Bills have got motivation coming from, uh, from uh, from where they're at, right? I mean, first first run, run back was a kickoff, uh, kickoff return. Place erupt. May, hey, may not have been dude, staged. It, was, it could no, have been staged. I wondered <laughs> Vegas. Hey, Vegas. See, <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> but I'm telling you what, I think the Bills. Drop that's just uh, the. I mean, I think the Bills are the are, are the favorite kind of coming into this thing. You know, I mean, that's just who I think is going to be. I mean, it's going to be one of those. It's, yeah, it's going to the Bills. All right, Bills. Okay, Bills, then we got. got Bills. Uh, we got New York at Minnesota. Everybody's picking the New York Giants here. Not I'm not. Doing it? I'm not buying it. I'm not buying the Giants going in. I think Dave. What's his name? David. Uh, who's the quarterback of the Giants? Yeah, Dave guy. something from Duke. <laughs> from, right? yeah. yeah, from Duke. Yeah. Dave from Wendy's. Dave. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Thomas. The all beef patty. <laughs> we should probably look. Might him up as well be. Point, right? Where's right. the beef? I don't know. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> And the old Wendy's. Where's the beef? The we need some more of this uh, 12.5. Uh, yeah, right. Five. Exactly. So. Uh, you got the Vikes? Daniel Jones. Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones. David. Dave, da- yeah, Dave. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. Come on, David and Goliath. It's Daniel. <laughs> it's Daniel versus Goliath. Yeah, it's Daniel versus Goliath. <laughs> I'm taking the Vikings by three touchdowns. Wow. Wow. It's. I think the Vikings are the team to beat in the NFC. I'm just going to say. 
I, it pains me to say that. Yeah. But I think the, the at home, that team is dangerous, and things can line up for them where they host the NFC Championship game at home. If they do that, I think they could cruise. Yeah, I mean, the Vikings are tough. You've got Dalvin Cook in the backfield. I mean, Jefferson is a stud. Jefferson's an absolute stud. Uh, I had him in my fantasy last year. I just I, I don't see them losing this game. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I've got them maybe by 9, 10 points. I think they win. By 13. All right, so we all got the Vikings too. We're we're all here, man. I'm telling you, right? We got two games left. We got Baltimore at Ooh, Cincinnati. This is uh, to me. This is, this is a tough one. But I'm taking the Bengals. Lamar is playing. Yes. Yes, he is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Lamar's in. He might be a little rusty. And five games rusty. I mean, he's been sitting for I think five five six games. He's been sitting. It's it's a divisional game. By a touch he is playing. Co- coin toss. Ten of these games. Six for the Bengals. Four for the you know. Uh, uh, the um, Ravens. He adds a different element to that team. I, I sure. think the I think the Ravens win. We're sitting here talking about like the, the Ravens the, win by field goal. Ra- wait, Ravens by field goal. I mean, Harbaugh's got that team clicking. Always has. The, they have the, a good field goal kicker too. They do have That's a right. good. Yeah, they have a good. Team. Don't bring that up. He's going to kick the longest field Tucker, against baby. the Lions. Uh, I'm going Bengals here. Uh, Joe Burrow, I think he's the new future quarterback yeah. of, of, of the like league. Joe. And yeah, Joe's a, I mean, I know he's from LSU, you know, but he's favorite team and favorite, Ohio State, second favorite coach. <laughs> Joe Cool. <laughs> Joe yeah. Cool with those uh, things. I, I, I got Bengals here by at least a touchdown. All right. And then we got so Cowboys you, at the Buccaneers. Is this the Monday night game? It is the Monday night game. You guys should come out for the Monday Listen, night game. Yeah, we will. Yeah, I'm serious. I host Monday night football every every week. So, so if you're not doing it, I'm not. I, I'm not picking against Tom. Unless you got any Zoom meetings, I'm or just something. not doing it. <laughs> I don't. At eight o'clock and at eight o'clock. o'clock. <laughs> sure, I hope better not. <laughs> um, this is a pick 'em game for me. Oh, really? I think if it was at Dallas, I'd be more inclined to be like Dallas by a billion. Yeah. A billion. I don't know. I, New uh, New England. I almost called it New England. Yeah. Uh, New England Junior. Yeah, Tampa. <laughs> Tampa, I think, has found its identity a little bit with that hurry-up offense. Yeah. That hurry-up offense can create some problems. I think if the defense can step up, they win by a touchdown. If they And, and he's 8-0 and no against the Cowboys all time. Yeah, I, I if, heard if that he, stat. I was like, man, he's 7-0. No. He's 7-0. Seven, no. He's 7-0. Seven, 7-0. No. Seven, no. Is think, that a Freudian slip? He's going to be 8-0. No. I do think they kick a field goal at the end to win the game. I yeah. They get past. I don't think the Cowboys are that good. I think their defense is good, but if the Buccaneers' defense shows up, I think they get it done. Okay, for me, one of the most overrated quarterbacks, and this is my opinion, is Dak Prescott. I'm not a big fan of him. I, I think some people say that. Yeah, yeah, he's got that. Yeah, that whole. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Hold on. Let, let me, get, let me turn the camera day. over to get <laughs> him doing the uh, Dak Prescott. Yeah, you should turn that over to get that yeah. on. Um, I, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think they're running game. They've had to mix it up between Pollard and, and Ezekiel Elliott, and they flip flop. They've never really kind of gotten things going. I mean, even though they're a good team, I don't think I'm with you. I don't know if their offense is that great. I think Brady's got just, I mean, he's got a chip on his shoulder just going through some personal stuff in his life. And now, you know, obviously it's a bad season. Who knows what Brady's future is there? I mean, he may end up Raiders. in San Francisco. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or yeah. Raiders. Or the Raiders, yeah. But I, I honestly think I think Brady's going to win. I think it'll be a tight game. I think it's not going to be a blowout in any means. It'll probably be a fun game to watch. Um, you know, might have to crack a couple extra Labatt Blue or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wild card weekend, baby. Uh, listen, I don't have a beer to cheers, but. Well, we drank them all. Yeah, we have geez. a pizza, though. Yeah, we got. Yeah, you want to try one? Or? Let's do it. All right. Let's do it real quick. Real quick. Who do you have as your Super Bowl winner? The Bills. Yeah, you. As soon as I saw you walking with the Zubas, the Bills. We call, I know you we, the Bills. We, we call this the the two minute uh, two minute drill on food. This was like the twenty nine minute. Drill. Yeah, so we're, we're we're messing around with pizza. Westman wants to make their own, uh, own pizza. I mean, this is one of our goals one that we wanted to do. Yeah. No, not you know the rules. It's just one bite here. No, no, no. Ready? It's one whole one bite. You just put one, the entire thing in. Yeah. In his mouth, he put. The you entire can't thing. give a crunch. You finish so, the entire thing. Oh, oh, you, you oh, dude, that's that's that, man. Yeah, we're doing like a flatbread. Uh, hey, what goes better with a thirteen percent or twelve percent beer than a, oh. a slice of that? Right? It's heaven. Another thirteen percent. Westwind beer. <laughs> Brewery here at Elkhart. Aaron West is the owner. Dude, thanks so much for making it happen. Absolutely, man. Looking forward to uh, hitting two, the road. Baby. Yeah, I know. Let's so, do it. Twenty twenty three. We're even on camera this year, so you right. you know you get to see all of this. 
<laughs> All of this. We are moving up now. I don't know. I, I got to make sure I up my game, though. Evan, Evan's shirt might be brighter than mine. <laughs> you guys rooting for the Seahawks this weekend, or who, who you got? Well, that's what it looks like. Uh, wait, who's your Super Bowl favorite before we go? Bills. Bills. Eh, I'll take it back. I, I'll, Casey's going to be t- tough to beat, I, you know. Yeah. Who, you asked me who my favorite is. I want the Bills to win it. Who do I think is going to win it? I think Casey's going to. I think Casey's going to run the show. I think it's the Vikings versus KC. Ooh, all right. A Super Bowl four rematch. Is that who it was? Super Bowl four rematch. Wow. Or was it Super? Bowl? I can't remember. Anyway, you got the Bills, uh, the the um, Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. You got the Minnesota Vikings. I think the the Chiefs do it. Yeah, Chiefs. I, I, Chiefs are a tough team. Chiefs man. are tough, man. Chiefs. All right, the Varsity Brews podcast. That is Aaron. That is Evan. Peace. I'm. He, he, <laughs> Hopefully, he didn't have the record button on there. <laughs> he may have snorted on that. I don't know. <laughs> this guy's I'm having too. This is what he's yeah. having too good of a time. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Varsity Brews podcast, January 29th. We'll see you then. Cheers.